Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video in the latest endurance quadcopter build. Now for those of you that have been following, you'll have seen me build this thing. Now this is a big quadcopter, surprise surprise, uh, that's running the DJI props and it's running iNav with a little GPS and compass at the front. Now, if you want to watch the entire series of what I'm doing and how I'm trying to figure all this out, then you can go and watch the video here. But the idea with this is to try and get back to where part of the hobby started, where we could fly for 20, 30 minutes at a time, rather than the complete focus on five inch racing quads. Now you'll notice, those of you that are eagle eyed, that this is a different GPS and compass module. And one of the things that I've been having trouble with on here is trying to get the compass to work. Not to calibrate, not any of that funky stuff, just to basically talk to the little flight controller that's in the middle. And one of the things that I find a lot with the comments that I get on YouTube is that the process of troubleshooting and how you fix things is a little bit complicated. So if you come across something that doesn't work as expected, it's a little bit tricky to try and figure out how you break that down into individual parts. So this video is more about what I'm doing to try and fix the I squared C issues around the compass. I'll get into all that in a minute. Um, and the fact that I actually still haven't figured it out but it's more about explaining the process I go through to try and get to the end where hopefully I'm gonna figure out what's going wrong. Now, when I was a kid, back when dinosaurs ruled the earth, everything that you got was made of discrete components. And in fact, my first car was the kind of car that every Saturday afternoon, I'd have to get the spanners and screwdrivers out and do something to it so that I could pretty much guarantee it was gonna start on Monday morning and get me to work. And these days, devices aren't really made to be user serviceable. So the skills of actually being able to figure out how you go around fixing a problem and, fi and finding where the problem is, is something of a little bit of a dying art. Because if you don't have to do it and you don't have to think logically, then it becomes something that is a bit alien to you. The challenge that we've got is that when you're building a quadcopter, uh, if you're unlucky enough that when you get to the end, something doesn't work, uh, that can usually mean that you have no idea where to start. So in this video, what I'd like to do is explain the process that I followed to try and figure out where the problem is on this model that my compass doesn't appear in iNav. Now I know the compass isn't appearing in iNav because in the interface, I'm getting this nice red icon over the compass here at the top in the iNav interface, and that means that it cannot be configured. So. The first thing I did was visually inspect the build. So what I did was take all of the pieces apart and I made sure that I had been in Dumpty and I hadn't accidentally soldered a wire to the wrong place. It's easy to do and I always recommend when I do any of my build series, you worthwhile always checking before you plug the power in, just double checking that you've done everything right. But occasionally you can still miss something or it might be for example, that the screen printing on the flight controller is the wrong way round. Now the compass is connected to the flight controller using something called I squared C or I two C. You'll see it written as it's actually I squared C is how it's set. And that actually has two lines. One is a serial data line that the data actually comes down. And the other one is a clock that's managing the timings of all the signals. Basically, if you want to know all about it, check out wiki for how I squared C works, but they have to be connected serial data line to serial data line, clock to clock, and then everything should just work. And this is the first build I've really had where it hasn't. So I was thinking, okay, I've done something stupid. I've probably connected them the wrong way around. So checked everything, checked my soldering was okay. It was okay. Nothing had come undone. I hadn't done anything wrong way around. Triple checked with the graphics on the internet for the flight controller that I had, and also for the GPS unit that I had and everything was wired correctly. Next thing I did was think, okay, well maybe there's a break in the wire itself. So getting a little resistance meter, I actually put the probes at each end of the wire and just made sure that the wire wasn't broken in the middle. It can happen sometimes and it might be a problem in the manufacture and I've had that happen in the past in my electronics career. Everything worked there as well. So I know that I actually have the connections to and from the right place and I haven't done anything stupid or I'm not looking at a problem with the wires actually been broken inside. Maybe the conductor had been separated or something when it's been pulled. 
Next thing I did, now I know it's physically okay, was went into the software and made sure the setup in iNav was correct. Have I selected the right type of compass? Went through, selected auto, select the compass that should be in the external module, uh, rebooted it, unplugged it, replugged it back in. Is it something that only happens when the iNav system initializes? Is it something that you have to power cycle? Went through all those different options. Unfortunately, keep getting that red icon. So at this point, I'm thinking, OK, maybe it is a problem with the GPS compass unit that I've actually got. I need now at this point to start swapping parts out to see whether or not we have an issue with either the flight controller or the physical hardware that's inside the GPS and compass. So luckily, I had a spare compass GPS unit. So I just swapped it over, plugged it in, went through the same process in iNav and had exactly the same result. So unless I've been spectacularly unlucky and I've had two GPS compass units with identical problems, which is very unlikely, possible, but very unlikely, that's the point where I thought, hmm, okay, maybe this is a problem. So at this point, I went onto the iNav wiki and I actually raised a question asking about this particular problem because it, it, there were other people who were using the same setup with the same flight controller, it may be that if other people have bumped into it, it was an actual issue that either could be fixed in the software or with something else. Now, the answer I got was that another pilot was using the same flight controller that I've got and also using the same GPS compass, and it was working fine. So, at that point, I know it's probably something specific to my setup. Now, a quick tip, whenever you're asking questions like this in places like Wiki or in places like YouTube or in forums, it's always good to give the details of the kit that you actually have, what troubleshooting you've done already, and the exact error codes that you're getting to give whoever's trying to give you a hand all the information they need to provide some useful suggestions. So now I know, okay, so it kind of should work, but it isn't. Um, I don't know whether it might be a board revision issue with a flight controller, but one of the things that the commenter said in the wiki was that he was using a different external compass. So rather than use the M8N that I tend to use here in my iNav builds, he was using a different type. So that was duly ordered and duly installed. Unfortunately, had exactly the same problem. Now that needed me to rewire the entire compass GPS wires up as well. So that also triple checked that I hadn't done anything wrong in that front. But again, it still wasn't configuring. So at this point, I'm starting to pull my hair out. Now there is a common issue that you can get with I squared C buses like this, those two lines that connect. Now what actually happens is the signal is going between the voltage and ground. And that change is actually representing the data. Now, for it to go up and down, it has to be connected to the voltage and then to ground. And sometimes the little resistors that connect that signal line up to those two pieces so it can change between those two voltage levels and be read as the digital signal that you need aren't there. Now those things, if they're not there, they're called pull-up resistors. And sometimes they're not there. So I installed a couple of pull-up resistors onto the little GPS module just so those lines absolutely had pull-up resistors in place so that they would go between zero and five volts. Because one of the things I did do at this point, I got a little oscilloscope out and actually plugged it in just to see whether I could see any data movement, any voltage change over time, um, and I wasn't seeing that at all. So I thought, okay, well, that might be part of the problem. So we installed those little resistors, put it all back together, plugged it in, tried it again, still didn't get anything right and working. So at this point, I thought, okay, let me just do one last thing to try and swap the SDA and the SCL lines around again, just in case it was actually incorrectly printed or the documentation for the GPS that I got was wrong, still didn't have it, so swap them back. So what does this actually mean? Well, now I know it isn't my wiring, probably. I know it isn't the GPS and compass module, I've got a good idea it isn't the pull-up resistors. So what could it be? There's only two things that I haven't really changed to sort this out. The first one is the actual flight controller itself. So it may be that the other person that's using this successfully with an identical configuration 
has a different revision of the board, that can happen. And that other revision of the board might be there to take care of I squared C issues like this. Or it could be a problem in iNav itself. Now, if the board that I was using was supported in earlier versions of iNav, one of the other things I could do is flash it with the previous version of iNav and try that out. The challenge that I've got is the board that I have here is only supported by iNav 2.0, so I don't have that luxury. However, looking in the iNav wiki, there's lots of things going around about I squared C. So for me, I'm now at a point where I'm stuck. It's either going to be iNav, and I need to wait for an update, and I'll try the update, iNav 2.1 or whatever the next one will be, to see if that fixes it. Or the other thing I can do is pull the flight controller and try another flight controller. And I'll keep you up to date with how it's all going and how I'm trying to get this fixed. And eventually, hopefully, if we get it fixed, I'll let you know what it was. But what I'm hoping is by going through that process, you're getting an idea of how it started very simply just by physically checking all the wiring was OK and then working through the problem, trying to take out piece by piece where the problem was. So first of all, by changing the compass out and making sure that uh, so first of all, by using another compass module, I could check that it wasn't the compass. Changing the compass module to a completely different type absolutely confirmed that. Also checked the I squared C wiring. I know that that's okay. So now it could either be the flight controller or iNav, and I know what the last two things are potentially that I could change. So hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that occasionally bump into problems like this. The trick is to try and treat each part of the problem individually and if you have spares to swap them out to see whether or not that makes an issue. If you swap a part and it doesn't make a difference then the chances are you've probably just swapped the part that has nothing to do with the issue. So by working your way back and double checking that the wiring's okay, you haven't made a mistake, your soldering's fine, the wires that you're using haven't got a break in them, you can usually very quickly start to resolve what can appear quite a complex issue down to one or two different pieces. So stay tuned. Hopefully when I get this sorted, I'll make another quick video and show you how we get this all working. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.